Hi, good morning everybody. So welcome to once again in the classes of pteridophytes. So today we are moving to discuss on the origin and evolution of pteridophytes. Okay. In the first classes onwards we studied the general characters of pteridophytes, how they are classified and also you know thoroughly about where they are growing and also the economic importance of pteridophytes. Okay. So now it is very important for us to know how and when pteridophytes evolved the origin and evolution of pteridophytes. Okay. So, you already discussed and you already studied the uh, algae and bryophytes in the last semester, how they are evolved also. Okay. So, how land plants evolved? You know, bryophytes are considered as the amphibians of plant kingdom. Okay. From the bryophytes, the next higher category is the pteridophytes. Okay. From the pteridophytes itself, there are two main categories. You know, the simple groups like our uh, Silotum, Selaginella, etc. to the higher fern like uh, groups of uh, plants also. Okay. How they are evolved? How the sporophytic nature? You know the plant body of pteridophyte is a sporophyte. Okay. What about the plant body of bryophyte and algae? They are gametophyte. So, from the gametophytic plant body, how the sporophytic plant body evolved? What is the fundamental difference between this? So, in the gametophytic plant body, actually what is first forming is the sex organs, antheridia and archegonia. Okay. Then they undergo, produces gametes, gametes fuses and produces the zygote that develops and become the, uh, the sporophyte. But what happens here is uh, the plant body itself is a sporophyte that produces the spores. Spores on germination give rise to a small gametophytic protalus that produces the sex organs and uh, uh, then after gametic fusion zygote that develop into the sporophytic plant. So, the plant body of pteridophyte is sporophyte that is very very important part. So, how this sporophyte evolved from a gametophytic plants ok that is the origin and evolution of pteridophytes. So, from the pteridophytes you know the next category is gymnosperms that also you started to study and from the gymnosperms the angiosperms. So, this is a series of process, series of uh, uh, that means some characters are newly forming and it is developing that is the origin and evolution. Okay. So, let us see how these pteridophytes evolved. Okay. So, there are mainly two schools of thought, two broad concepts regarding the origin. First one is a group of uh, scientists they are telling that these pteridophytes are evolved from bryophytes that is bryophyte origin ok. Another group they are um, in the strong uh, support that they are developed from the they are originated from the algal stalks and evolved parallel with the bryophytes clear. So, not from the while in the time of bryophytes parallelly another group that is what pteridophytes. So, bryophytes from algae as well as pteridophytes from algae. That is the second thought. So, two important thought one is from the ancestral stalk or the ancestral root of uh, pteridophytes are bryophytes. Another concept is that algae that parallelly uh, like bryophytes it become what pteridophytes. Understood? Okay. Now, so first let us discuss the various theory that explains how these pteridophytes evolved from bryophytes. So, in order to describe that, there are some examples, some particular theory that you have to study that are anthocerotian theory, strobilar theory, phyton theory and protocom theory. Understood? Okay. So, first one, what about anthocerotian theory? You know the anthocerous plant. You studied it well, its life cycle in the last semester in bryophytes. Okay. And in that session also you studied these anthocerous are highly advanced, highly evolved bryophyte. See, this is a image of anthocerous. You can see the sporophyte, a horn-like structure. It is also known as horn bird, you know. So, this horn-like structure sporophyte that is having a central session. Just remember in the bryophyte class uh, that uh, sporophyte section, hmm? longitudinal section. You know the center region is the columella that is sterile tissue, cellular tissue. Hmm? Okay. So, this th theory is actually supported by Campbell and Smith, two important scientists. 
and they believe that spore of fight of anthocyros has all the characters that uh, to become a bryophyte become land plants means this spore of fight this is the structure spore of fight while its section you can see it has some sterilization some erect structure development from this okay and according to campbell anthocyros is the most advanced and having a mechanism for indefinite growth that's very very important point and also there are tissues limited tissue for the spore production of spores okay so you know the center region columella and the basal on what is some sterile tissue and when you reach in the apex you can see some uh, spores or sporophytic tissue so only some portion is meant for that uh, spore production all other portions are sterile clear so this is very important point and this is a green naked uh, the sorry some important points that support the view are the green naked plant body and the presence of meristem what is the character of meristem meristem will continuously divide that help in the growth okay so possession of a meristem that assuring the indefinite growth this supports the anthocyrotian origin next presence of a columella i already told you columella that can be compared with vasculature of land plants you know what is vasculature in land plants you know in the center portion i will show you here uh, what is the vasculature see just a minute okay in the vasculature you can see uh, when you take the plant part this is the stem okay so what is passing through its center portion this is what the vascular cylinder you know vascular bundles so what are the vascular bundles it's made up of xylem phloem campium etc this is a conducting tissue you know so when you take the section of the horn of or the sporophyte of anthocyros you can see it's a central part like this central part is sterilized and you will call it as what columella you call it as columella okay so columella is a um, can be compared with uh, the vascular bundles in the uh, tridophytes and other higher organisms okay and uh, these having close resemblance with some of the fossil tridophyte one example is the rhinia and the sporophyte of and sporophyte of anthocyros is this uh, horn like structure that can be compared with the ancient pteridophyte it is fossilized form an example is rhinia rhinia is a fossilized pteridophyte okay then smith traces the origin of rhinia from an anthocyrotian type stock so anthocyrotes may be the ancestor of pteridophytes what are the evidences to support this first one is a green black, uh, naked plant body another one is presence of meristem indefinite growth third one is the columella that sterile tissue can be compared with the uh, that vasculature of land plants etc understood you have to study this next and this is that we already discussed and also the sex organs embedded in anthocyros as well as in tridophytes they are embedded inside in anthocyros also it's not seeing outside clear now second very important theory is the strobilar theory this is proposed by bauer in 1894 that uh, po, the, the theory the bauer postulated the origin of uh, sporophyte that is uh, antithetic origin origin of sporophyte is from zygote of the by reduction division you know zygote by reduction so you know in that bryophytes male and andridia archegonia clear andridia produce male gamete archegonia produce female gamete that is male gamete is sperm female gamete egg understood both undergo fusion both are haploidian number undergo fusion what is produce diploid 2n zygote clear up to this it is clear okay now what is the strobilar theory saying that this diploid zygote never undergo reduction division okay and they directly become a plant that is what the diploid sporophytic plant of ferns or tridophytes clear so zygote divide mitotically produce diploid tissue that forms the sporophyte hence originally in a sporophyte all the tissues are devoted to spore production that is fertile clear so means the uh, see 
the diploid 2n number after fusion of gamete never undergo reduction division. What happens here is it directly become the uh, sporophytic plants. It directly become the uh, sporophytic plants. That is the uh, theory of strobilar theory. Clear? Now, next one is phyton theory. According to this theory, the fundamental part of the plant body was leaf and axis system. Okay. The axis arises by the fusion of the leaf bases. So, this theory is proposed by Selikovsky in 1901. Uh, the stage, see here the point. Uh, at the stage where sporophyte is like a strobilus, that is a cluster of leaf. Sporophyll is attached to a stendhal core. The plant is cluster of leaf and there is no axis as such. You see, in the funeria like uh, uh, structure, you can see uh, that this is the axis and you can see number of leaves clustered like this. Okay. And here what is produced is the capsule. So, likewise from this clustered number of uh, leaves, from the leaf bases actually the other parts developed, that branched, branches developed and they become the uh, higher pteridophytes. Means, uh, it is actually you can also compare this to the strobilar theory also. This is not at all an accepted theory. Then protocom theory. This is put forward by tube. What, is, what it says is that the primitive, some of the primitive pteridophytes having some structure that is undifferentiated mass. Um, that similar to the gametophyte that is known as protocol okay so uh, some groups having an undifferentiated tissue that is known as protocom so this is regarded that basically a primitive pteridophytic sporophyte okay it is put forward by tube clear so an undifferentiated mass very much like a gametophyte and that example of a protocom in species of lycopodium like so, that is uh, that protocom theory. It is originated from protocom. That is an undifferentiated mass of tissue. It is observed in certain pteridophytes also. From that protocom, the entire sporophyte is developed. Now, another second important uh, concept is algal origin. First one, there are different hypotheses in the algal origin. First one is Church hypothesis. According to Church, the pteridophytes evolved that is by polyphyletic origin means not from a single stock from a not from a single ancestor it is polyphyletic okay according to him according to church there is a hypothetical group of marine algae that called thalassiophyta clear so thalassiophyta is actually not there but it is a hypothetical group and hypothetical group is thalassiophyta marine origin and this is the stock of all land plants. So, all land plants developed from this thalassiophyta. That is an, an imaginary concept. Then, Grigas. According to Grigas, uh, he derived bryophytes and pteridophytes from three groups of algae. According to him, bryophytes and pteridophytes developed from three groups. That is chlorophyceae, phyophyceae and rhodophyceae. From these three groups, the uh, bryophytes and pteridophytes evolved. Okay, according to him, mosses evolved from chlorophyceae, liverwort from phyophyceae, okay, and rhinia and horneophyton that are tridophytes that develop from chlorophyceae, silota derived from phyophyceae. According to Grigas, that uh, algae, uh, bryo and pterido develop from some of the groups of marine algae mainly or freshwater algae like chlorophyceae, phyophyceae and rhodophyceae, okay, next. Andrews theory. Andrews is also believer of polyphyletic origin. Not from a single stock but from different stock. His observations are also based on the discovery of fossils in the certain marine algae. One example is Nematothallus. That is a marine fossil algae. That is a fossil. And it shows several adaptation in terrestrial life. This may be the ancestor of the present Bryo and Terido. Okay. Then Leclerc theory. According to him, uh, that paleopalynological study, what is palynological study, pollen grains and spores study, that is fossilized spore study. Uh, based on the study, he proposed the polyphyletic origin. Okay. He, based on the paleopalynological study, he strongly supports that rhinia, xylophytes like rhinia, 
as a descendants of complex rays mini polyphyletic multi origin that rainia is a fossil uh, uh, teridophyte this is developed first that may be from a complex race different species that uh, polyphyletic origin not from a single stock that is uh, leclerc theory the lamp theory according to lamp a diphyletic origin means two independent lines one is xylopsida another one is lycopsida developed from thallophyta independently means thallophyta is actually what algae so thallophyta independently become two groups what are the groups xylopsida and lycopsida you know xylopsida you studied xylota okay lycopsida i think nothing to study then xylopsida gave rise to three groups spinopsida teropsida and cycadopsida this is actually teropsida don't don't make it as mistake teropsida okay so spinopsida teropsida and cycadopsida cycadopsida is gymnosperm so xylopsida is developed first from uh, a group of thallophyta from that another group is developed that is a lamp theory okay next according to mehra mehra theory p n mehra ancestors of land plants are found among green algae so that is algal origin he opposed polyphyletic origin but agreeing the different groups of pteridophytes diverge from very beginning itself all of them have some common group at that is uh, many theories we discussed is most of them supports a polyphyletic theory that is not there is not a common uh, ancestor but many but according to mehra it is a not a polyphyletic origin it developed from a common group of algae understood mehra theory okay so what we discussed today is the origin and evolution of pteridophytes in brief i can we can uh, conclude that uh, bryophytes and pteridophytes they are somewhat mutually related okay and the different school of thought one is the bryophyte origin another one is the algal origin okay and some believes in polyphyletic origin some believes in diphyletic origin and some believes in monophyletic origin single origin okay so basically that uh, bryophyte origin is may fully supports the anthocerotian theory that is anthocerous as the ancestor of pteridophytes why because they have the meristem growth and they have the columella resemblance to vascular bundle and such uh, characters they supports the anthocerotian theory then strobilar theory and phyton theory also then some other theories that are actually not uh, not actually accepted like protocom theory then in the algal origin there are different opinions polyphyletic origins diphyletic origins etc and according to some there are certain common algae group from which these land plants evolved some example chlorophyceae phyophyceae and rhodophyceae and according to others these um, two groups evolved like xylopsida and lycopsida evolved from chlorophyceae from that uh, xylopsida some other groups of pteridophytes lycopsida some other groups of pteridophytes and last one is mehra's theory he believes in poly Uh, he believes in monophyletic that is al from a common group of algae and he was against the polyphyletic origin so this is uh, in you have to study in brief not go into detail only some three marks questions from this part because you are ug students so how uh, that uh, pteridophytes evolved or explain the origin and evolution of pteridophytes okay so i hope you understood well so try to remember the name of the scientist that you are going to study okay so have a nice day